Hello everyone, Steve Lentz here with Discover Options and the Inside Wire. It is October 10th, 2017. Presented material is for educational purposes only and should not be construed as personalized financial advice. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. Folks, we are on part five of the best practices, broken wing butterfly. We are doing back testing now, reporting on some results. So what we're going to do is review a bit where we're at in terms of rules, adjustment rules, implementation rules, and then I'm going to show you the results of about 16 campaigns that I've been back testing this last week. And uh, let's go and take a look, all right? Here we go. This is the best practices broken wing in terms of implementing it. It's uh, We put these on roughly 60 to 85 days out. Our short put is located in the puts. Now, this is all in the puts now. Roughly a minus 30 delta is where we put our short strike. We go further out of the money to find our most distant long put. And we go about 5% further out of the money from the short strike. Okay, once we have that, we go to the near at the money. Uh, and sometimes it could be an in, in the money put to do put on our long our other long put but we use that as the delta adjuster the delta adjuster now in the SPX we're gonna favor the 25 point strikes when possible because that's where the open interest is gravitated towards and uh, the liquidity will be better there and our fills will be better so when we can we gravitate to the 25 point strikes once we put this on we want to make sure before we do it that we have our debit is less than 5% of the initial capital required. So if it requires $10,000, we want a, that debit to be under 500, okay? And we walk into risk, meaning that we scale in by halvesies. We put in, you know, we, we put on half our, uh, our available capital first, and then when we get triggered, we put on our second half uh, using the 30 delta, okay? Uh, for that second butterfly. Okay, here's an example, just one simple example here. Uh, in this case, we uh, uh, did it, and this is just implementing it. We went to the uh, 30 delta, which happened to be at the 2025. We go out 5% from there. That takes us to the 1920. Now, the uh, 1920 was just a little bit, um, uh, well, it, since it's just one strike away from the 1925, which has better liquidity, we're going to gravitate to the 1925 in this case. And uh, once we have these two strikes determined, we look at the delta, and then we come up here into towards the add and near the money puts to find the appropriate delta adjuster strike to use. In this case, we went to the 2090s that took our delta to about as close to zero as we're going to get. At the same time, our debit is well under 5% of our uh, initial net requirement, our capital required. And so we're looking good there. When you analyze this, we're going to use um, uh, the, the more distant out of the money put uh, implied volatility. And we looked, and we, I went through this analysis in the, on the May 23rd inside wire. If we're going to do some analysis work in terms of expected return, that's what we look at, is uh, uh, that methodology described in that inside wire on May 23rd of 17. When you analyze the trade, here's what you have. Typically, you're going to have a very, very flat T plus zero line. On the upside, you can see you do, it's not going to go down very far, given that that's that 5% uh, limit there. But you can just see here, this T plus zero line is flat for a very, very a broad uh, range of prices. Pretty cool. All right, so that's how we implement these. When we go out 30 days, here's what the T plus 30 looks like. All right, we have a nice positive expected return. Okay, and what we did is we compared the best practices to the three other approaches, Rhino, Road Trip, and Kevlar. And when we do that comparison, we find that the uh, best practices has a positive expected return. At the same time, it has the lowest standard deviation of the possible returns from among the other three 
uh, out of the money put butterfly approaches. Pretty cool. So that's why we really like this approach uh, a lot. Now, we were doing leapfrog approaches. We spent several sessions looking at adjustment approaches, upside and downside, and we came in for a landing on the leapfrog approach. And so here's what we do, and then we back test this. And this is what I'm going to show you how well it back tested going back about a year and a half. So what we do is have some trigger points at which we scale in the other half so that we have two butterflies working. After we put on that second butterfly, all right, when the market moves to certain levels, we're going to remove and replace. Remove a butterfly and replace it with a new one. Okay, we're not tweaking the butterflies. We're not adding spreads. We're not doing reverse Harveys or any of that. We're just simply removing a butterfly, putting a new one on. Very simple. Okay, and then it, to, to end our campaign, we have predetermined profit and stop levels. If we make 5% on our total allocated capital required, that's after we put in both butterflies. If we make 5% on that large, larger number, uh, we take off the whole thing. Both butterflies are removed for our 5% profit. If we're losing 5% of our capital required, we're going to get out at that point. We could bump that up to 10%. Okay. For purposes of back testing, I'm keeping it at the minus 5% level. But you know what, folks? You could certainly get more aggressive and let it go farther because if you let it go farther, there's a good chance the time premium will, or time decay will kick in more and boom, you can make the money back and you can get it in positive. But I just kept it to these levels here. Also, there's a time stop we use, a 30-day time stop when, when your uh, options get to have 30 days left in their life. You know, that's when things can get slopey and curvy real fast. The gammas start getting, uh, you know, you get more exposure to gamma. Your deltas can shift very quickly. We just simply leave, the we just remove ourselves from that environment and, and you know, see if we have a qualified and we can put it on again and, you know, start a new campaign. All right, so here is a, uh, uh, an example of an upside move real quick. Here we are with a position that we put on February 8th, just before the market's going to blast off to the upside. Our trigger points to add our second butterfly are when we go to the um, uh, ex we go the uh, expiration break even line right here, times 1.01 .01, takes us out to roughly there. That's one trigger. The other trigger is at the short strike of that first butterfly. So we wait to see what the market does. Okay, in this case, it went up and hit that level. And now what are we going to do? We're going to put on a second butterfly with the short strike at minus 30. That's what's described here. Okay, our short, our, our scaled-in second butterfly, we're going to the 30 delta. We do the 5% out. We use the delta adjuster at the at or near the money, and we favor 25-point strikes. So in this case... Here we added our second butterfly right here okay, with a short strike there. We have our long strike here. And way out here, you know, we were out 5% from that short strike. We're way out there and doing, uh, putting on this second butterfly. Our new, our new trigger points to now begin our leapfrog is, again, at expiration break even here, 1% further from there. That's where our trigger point is, and also the distant short strike of the more, of the original uh, butterfly. So if the market reverses, comes all the way back to this original short strike, then we're going to get out in of of that of uh, this butterfly and put on another one over here. So what does the market do? It moves up, hits our trigger. Now what are we going to do? We're going to remove that initial butterfly and come over here and do a 40 delta, minus 40 delta, new butterfly right there. And so this is what we do on the replacing. We always replace, we remove a butterfly, the most distant one, replace it one with one that is at a minus 40 delta. I tried doing a minus 30 in an in a, a environment where the market was moving up. 
I tell you what, you're just chasing the market all the time. You're never in under the tent, and you don't want to go that route. This works out far better. Stick to the minus 40s on your replacement butterflies. And, uh, and, and again, we, we do the same methodology, going 5% further out of the money using the delta adjuster here. Now, as an aside, and I didn't have time to put in a uh, slide here, okay, uh, in a high implied volatility environment, okay, high implied volatility environment, you could invert these. We'll have more on this in a little bit. You could invert these so that the near and you, you just simply put on an at the money, okay, and then the distant out of the money put becomes your delta adjuster, okay, delta adjuster, okay. The delta adjuster is this one right here. It comes up and is this one. Okay, right there. The distant out of the money long put becomes your delta adjuster in a high vol environment. More on that in future times, okay, in a future installment. And I had to do that in this back test occasionally, um, but we're going to dive into that more as we will on some of the nuances of this approach because this approach works. Okay, you're going to find out that real quick here. Okay, so in this case, um, we, we put this on, and here we are. We're going to have to remove this, come over and put on a new one, and this is what it looks like. We got rid of the one here. We added the one here, and see how we're now under the tent right there? Looking good. Now what do we do? Okay, now where are our adjustment points? Well, we'll have one back here at this distant short strike right there, and then at the break-even plus 1% up here. Okay, so now we have new trigger points, and away we go. All right, now on the downside, what does it look like? Okay, here we're putting on an initial position on December 29th. Here, let me change colors. All right, we have our trigger points. 1% above the expiration break even and at the short strike. We've scaled in half. Market goes down. It actually gaps through our short strike. Here we are. We're actually making a little bit of money. But now it's time to put on a second scaled in butterfly over here. So we do that. And in this case, because we have overlapping shorts and longs, we end up with this particular picture. Okay, this particular picture at expiration. Here's that minus 30 delta butterfly out here. Now where are our adjustment points? We've just scaled in our second butterfly. Okay, where are the adjustment points at this point? Way out here. So that's the first butterfly strikes. We scaled in with this second one here. Where are our new butterfly adjustment points? Boom. It's the distance short, 1% above that expiration break even, takes us to right there. And we just wait, okay? And we're also looking for a 5% profit, or if the market hits either of these points, we would remove the most distant butterfly and replace it. All right, and so here's where we're at. Uh, let me see here. So here, ah, here we, here's what happened. Indeed, the market moves down, hits this point here, okay, right there. See how that happened? Now we're all we're right here. We're actually losing a little bit of money. Now what do we do? Now what do we do? Remove and replace. We're going to remove this distant butterfly up here and replace it with another one with the 40 delta down here. Okay? And that's what it looks like. See, it once again, here's where we're at. The market moved down, hit right here. We're going to remove this one and put one further up down here at the 40 delta. And this is what we had. We used to have one over here. We got rid of this. We added one with the 40 delta right there, and there we go. Okay. Now where are our new butterflies? Okay, we added this one. 
where are our new trigger points? Right there. Okay. If it hits this sh short strike, or if it comes up to the expiration break even right there, plus one percent. And that's how it works, folks. You just have trigger points, and you remove and replace, and away you go. Here's some back testing work we did. We implemented the leapfrog campaign. Number one, only when we had a technically qualified bar. I want to show you what a technically qualified bar is because it's part of our core mentoring curriculum. We've done a ton of work over it over the last several years to determine what is the best environment for implementing these advanced uh, market neutral premium collection strategies. So first, we do it only on technically qualified days. I'm back testing this with a plus or minus 5%, a 30 day time stop. Okay, and we're always going to the first ex expiry after 60 days, with over 60 days left in the life of the options. Technically qualified. Where are we at here? Technically qualified. This again is from the core curriculum. It's also from past inside wire presentations for determining market neutral, optimum market neutral environments to collect premium no matter which way the market goes. Number one, you want to have the price be above its 50 day simple moving average. Okay? You could flip a coin and you, can, and you could do that over 4,000 times in the market and roughly since Jan of 2000, 64.7% of all the bars ended up becoming favorable bars, it revealed themselves to be having been favorable bars for selling premium in a market neutral sense, butterflies, condors, etc. Okay. Now, if you were to look at all the bars above the 50 day simple moving average, all right, we, we look at all of those and then we divide it up by the stochastics, we discover that if, as long as the market is above its 50-day simple moving average, there's really only one environment from the stochastic standpoint um, that's bad, and that is when the stochastic is, is low and beginning to trend up. All right, The market can be very volatile, particularly going bullish right there, and um, we don't want to be market neutral right there. But every other environment above the 50-day simple moving average is, is good. You're good. Now, Anytime you're below the 50-day simple moving average, pretty much you want to stay out. Okay, now we're, you know, I, I, I do some heavy refining of all this in my weekly uh, market, you know, uh, condor butterfly market timing report. But in general, you want to avoid environments that are where you're below the 50-day simple moving average. That just is how it works. But again, I'd refer you to those other presentations. Uh, on inside wire, but in particular in the core curriculum for the mentoring students we have. All right, and here is in my meta stock the painted bars denoting uh, quality entry points for butterflies and condors. The red bars are where we avoid entering in to those uh, positions. Clearly, when we're below the 50 day simple moving average, but also. When we're above the 50-day simple moving average, there can be some environments that we avoid. As you can see, there are a few bars like that. All right, so we begin by going back to 16. Oops, back tested results. And I went all the way back to roughly February of 16. Let me come here. And I came up to this point here in 16. We took a little time off because the market was in a bad environment. And when the market popped up again in November of 16, we started our campaigning again and um, came all the way through to August here. I haven't done uh, SEP yet because I didn't want to have a campaign right in the middle and stop. So I came through August 16th, I believe. Here are the results. Drum roll, 16 campaigns. We started with about $70,000, 70000 doing a five-lot butterfly to scale in in the SPX, and then another five-lot butterfly scaling in. 
and just kind of what the same examples I've used, you know, all the way to date here. And with 70,000 after 16 campaigns, in that time from February 25th of 16 to August 16th of 17, roughly 18 months, we had 14 winning campaigns and only two losing campaigns. Just, just outstanding. Just outstanding. Now, for each of those campaigns, the average winning campaign made almost 2,500. The losing campaign average was 1,706. I think one of those two losers was simply a time stop where we were down a little bit. And that contributed to the average being much less than the uh, average winner. But you can kind of see here how it, shook, how it shook out. The average duration, these are inaccurate. Okay, and I don't know why. I'd have to chase that down. Uh, but certainly, uh, I'll show you the dates here in a little bit. Clearly, the, uh, the average duration was much longer than two weeks. And uh, look at this. Our two losers were consecutive. They were consecutive here. Here's the list of results. All right, the list of results here. The natural question is, is there anything about June of 16 that you could have done to filter that out? And uh, I already filtered out quite a bit using the uh, technical qualifications. I'd have to do a little more work there. But uh, just be aware that you can have multiple, you can have consecutive losers here. But look at this. We had uh, uh, just, you know, after that, though, it was clear sailing all the way through. Not too bad. Not too bad. And, and both those losers came when it was technically, you know, qualified. And the first one was a time stop. Okay, just a simple time stop where we happen to have vol go up on some down moves. Our triggers weren't hit, um, but because of increasing implied volatility, we were, uh, we uh, got taken out there with a loss there. Okay, so... There you go. I think the 556, that was a time stop. We just weren't making much money. Uh, but all in all, not too bad. Not too bad. And when you take a look at the other statistics, and I didn't do a day-by-day -day graph here, but I wanted to come down here and show you here what the annualized return was. We made 45% on our money. Annualized return was 30. And so that's kind of what you're looking at. It's a, it's a very conservative way to make 30% a year, I'd say, on average. Again, but that's only 18 months look. We have to go back and continue on and refine, continue to refine our rules and uh, make them even better and, and more defined. So that is it. Okay, folks, thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week with more research. Take care. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.